Hello and welcome. I'm so glad that you're here with us to worship. I'm David Ware. I'm a member of the clergy team here at the Church of the Redeemer in Baltimore, Maryland. We're all so glad that you've joined us. Let's praise God. <laughs> our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord, honor do his name, bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him, and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces of the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do these things. The word of the Lord.
Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with their Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malicence, said, Why are you putting me to the test? You hypocrites, show me the coin used for tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This summer, a group of us read I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. We met most Tuesdays of July and August to discuss our thoughts on the book. During the months leading up to the summer, as we experienced the powerful fight against racial injustice, we realized that, as white students, it was our responsibility to educate ourselves about systemic racism and the plight that black, indigenous, and people of color have to face on a daily basis. In the book, Brown mentioned a field trip that she went on as a teenager. On the trip, one of her white peers said something that resonated with her. That idea stuck with us as well, because we see it as the reason why we must continue our pursuit. Austin wrote, something shifted inside me on this trip, something powerful and unmistakable. Doing nothing was no longer an option for me. Anger is often looked down upon. It is often used to dismiss women and especially women of color. It is common for a woman to be criticized for being too angry for the same reason that a man is deemed passionate. Using the excuse that someone was too angry when they were speaking about injustice is a form of tone policing and an easy way to brush off their main message. I'm not saying that we should let anger take over, control us, and dictate our every word. I'm saying that we need to move past the idea that anger is an inherently negative emotion. I'm saying that we need to recognize that righteous anger is a powerful tool. If we were not angry about injustice in the world, would we all just passively allow it to continue? There has been a lot to be angry about over these past few months. I personally have struggled with ways to reckon with my anger. As a woman, we are taught to handle our emotions and to not make a scene. Especially when it comes to anger, showing your emotions can be considered disruptive. But by keeping our emotions bottled up inside, the only thing truly being disturbed is our sense of peace. Austin Channing Brown writes, anger is not inherently destructive. My anger can be a force for good. My anger can be creative and imaginative, seeing a better world that doesn't yet exist. It can fuel a righteous movement towards justice and freedom. Coming to terms with one's anger in the way that Brown describes is something we should all aspire to. We shouldn't feel the need to shy away from feeling our stronger, more compelling emotions. We should let them guide us to seek change and prosperity in a deeply flawed existence. Here in this world of injustice and hatred, I sometimes feel that I am living in constant anger. That underneath all the other complex emotions I am feeling, there is always the deep sense that I am angry at the world around me. Austin Channing Brown's book showed me that this anger I feel doesn't always have to be a bad thing. See, anger can be a sign of injustice. When you feel that tight feeling in the pit of your stomach, when something just unsettles you, it isn't a sinful emotion that needs to be repressed. It's a warning. It is the good and God inside of you telling you that something isn't right. When we feel angry, instead of pushing it down or letting it pull us into despair, we can embrace it in a way that is productive. Austin calls this way of using our anger for good, creative anger. Without creative anger, there is no passion. Without creative anger, there is no fuel for change. Next time you feel this kind of anger, acknowledge it and let it drive you. Along with the many other things I learned from Austin, I learned that anger is not the same as hate. 
Anger can be a symbol of empathy and love. Often, whether directly or indirectly, we have been taught that hope is a fundamental facet of the fight for social justice. Our generation is told to have hope for the future. We are told to have hope that equality will be the law of the land. Sometimes, or perhaps oftentimes, activists who do not have hope or who do not speak about hope are dismissed as too negative or pessimistic. For example, Ta-Nehisi Coates is a famous author who writes about race, but he doesn't express hope for a better future. In fact, he hates when white folks ask him to offer hope for a better future, one that is devoid of racism. Coates is clear about his stance. He doesn't think that this country, which was built on the backs of enslaved people, on land that was viciously stolen from indigenous people, will simply get over racism. He recognizes that this country is rooted in racism, but the absence of hope is not an excuse to stop fighting and to give up. Too often than not, people will look at the flaws in our world and choose to hope that the work of others will correct the injustices they see. Relying on this hope is a privilege, one that cannot go ignored. It is our role as human beings to fight for one another and to stand up against the injustices we witness. Even if there is no discernible change on the horizon, we still must get up every morning and walk out our doors, armed with what we know to be right, and fight for a better future. Austin writes, this is the shadow of hope, knowing that we may never see the realization of our dreams and yet still showing up. We cannot allow ourselves to become trapped by the idea that we live in a perfect world. Instead, we should be open to seeing what can change to make the lives of every one of us better. In I'm Still Here, there are many subjects to reflect on, all of which are equally important to focus on, all of which can help shape you into a better person, and all of which can teach you about racism and why it is so very important that we end it. One of them is church, and particularly how Christianity and whiteness are an influential to our lives and what we can do in the world right now. Austin Channing Brown writes about how Christianity plays into racism itself and what it means to be Christian when it comes to discrimination and prejudice. She writes, I am a Christian. My anger is dismissed as a character flaw, showing just how far I have turned from Jesus. Real Christians are nice, kind, forgiving, and anger is none of these things. But this is only one interpretation. Jesus has been angry. Everyone is angry at least once in their life. Also, if we are determining what it means to be a real Christian, let's put it out there that Jesus and God want us to love all people as we would love ourselves. They would not want us to segregate or treat others in this way. We are all people. Christianity should not be used as an excuse to be racist, homophobic, or any other form of discrimination, because when you really think about it, would God ever support this kind of treatment? Grappling with anger and hope in a world that has been so utterly desolated by division and discrimination and pain is an ongoing mission that every one of us has embarked upon. We have learned from Austin Channing Brown and our fellow peers about ways we can approach our predicament. So what now? What does it mean to be an anti-racist Christian in our world right now? How can we leave today with a new drive to go into the world and fight injustice? And what role does our faith play in our path towards a more empathetic existence? The answers are not simple, and to be honest, we don't have them. Being anti-racist is a lifelong journey, not a finite number of steps that, when completed, removes the responsibility we have as Christians and human beings to cherish and support others, no matter who they are. In order for us to build a more empathetic world, we need to first build more empathetic versions of ourselves. Austin Channing Brown's lessons have helped us to begin this journey. The fight starts within. The world around us is a reflection of ourselves. By unlearning and relearning, we can change the way we think, hope, and feel, growing into the more empathetic existence that God requires of us. Something in shifted inside us on this trip. Something powerful and unmistakable. Doing nothing is no longer an option for us. We believe and trust in God the Father, maker and sustainer of all things, and in God the Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and in God the Holy Spirit, giver of life and truth. This is our faith. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, all Father, who art in heaven, 
or in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be my name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. Or is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us. Forgive us. Our trespasses. Our trespasses. As we forgive those, we forget those who trespass, who trespass against us, against us, and lead us not, lead us not into temptation, into temptation, but deliver us, deliver us from evil, from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thy kingdom, and the power, the power, and the glory. Of the glory forever and ever and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The suffrages. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And, and sustain, sustain us, us with, with your, your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of your glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you and bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayers are requested for Matthew, Brooke, Trinessa, Zoya, Ida, Mary, Joan, Cooper, Tracy, Fraz, Tom, Jake, Jennifer, James, Colleen, Donald, Deborah, Earl, Fran, Carrie, Robert, Minor, David, Carol, Steve, Kathy, Ebert, Robert, Maureen, John, Lily, Bobby, Jane, Tori, Harper, Sally, Gemma, the Wiley family, Rachel, Justin, Rachel, Connor, Ingrid, Sarah, Cheryl, Fran, Anthony, Robert, Nick and Marvin, Jay, Christopher, Abby and McLean, Marie, Rachel, Akira, Kathy, Betsy, Daniel, George, Laney, Francis, Anne, Monet, Barbara, Gail, Robert, Jim, the Blomquist family, Jason, Janet and Eddie, Jean, Charlie, and Molly. Please pray for frontline medical responders. Mark, Allison, Panagis, John, James, Liza, Charlotte, Jeremiah, Jerry, Bill, Michael, Eric, Jake, Hannah and Ed, Christopher, Allie, Ian, Anne, Tom, David, Teresa, Andy and Cammie, Connie, Reed, Harden, Phyllis, 
Morgan, Kira, Lydia, Jess, Hannah, Ben, Melissa, Eric, and Eric. Please pray for those who have died. Midge Taylor, Eleanor Wright, Charlotte Mellon, Vermel Converse, Michael Mueller, Mary Carlo, Dion Jenkins, Jim Russell, Tom Richardson, the Reverend Canon David Holland, Marilyn Nuttall, Jean Gettier, the Reverend Canon George Luck, John Hill, Donna Lee Frisch, Penny Bennett, Gina Brandon, Rich Rapuano, Dottie Hopkins, Rick Swanson, Patricia Hanan, John Wilson, Kit Nelson, Normie Harris, Robert Bone, Naomi Lewis Brooks, Ronald DeStefano, Laura Hugh, June Finney, Cynthia Armbruster, Elva Hazelhurst, Michael W. Stoner, Carolyn Miles, Gertrude Thomas, Jean Giese, and Eric Benson. Almighty God, who has promised to heed our prayers offered in your son's name, we ask you to mercifully hear us who have made our prayers to you and grant those things which we have asked according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We hope that this time together has given you some nourishment, and some healing medicine for your heart, your soul, and your mind. Go in peace, go with God.